we are asked to solve the given rational equation. The first step is to factor the denominators so that we can determine the least common denominator. Once we know the LCD, we multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD to clear the fractions from the equation. Then we solve the resulting equation and check the possible solutions. So looking at the first rational expression, we have x over the quantity 3x minus 9. We factor 3x minus 9 by factoring out the greatest common factor of 3, which gives us 3 times the quantity x minus 3. And then we have minus 6 equals on the right, x minus 3 doesn't factor, we just have 1 over the quantity x minus 3. And now looking at the factors of the denominators, notice the LCD must contain a factor of 3 and a factor of x minus 3, and therefore the LCD is 3 times the quantity x minus 3. The next step is to multiply both sides of the equation by 3 times the quantity x minus 3. If it's helpful, we can write 3 times the quantity x minus 3 as a fraction with the denominator of 1. And now let's show each product. On the left, we have 3 times the quantity x minus 3 over 1 times x over 3 times the quantity x minus 3. And then we have minus 3 times the quantity x minus 3 times 6. On the right, we have 3 times the quantity x minus 3 times 1 over the quantity x minus 3. And now before multiplying, we will simplify out any common factors between the numerators and denominators. Notice here we have a common factor of 3 as well as x minus 3. 3 divided by 3 simplifies to 1, and so does x minus 3 divided by x minus 3. This leaves us with 1 times x, which is x. Here nothing simplifies, but 3 times 6 is 18, giving us minus 18 times the quantity x minus 3 equals on the right. x minus 3 divided by itself simplifies to 1, just giving us 3 times 1, which is 3. Notice now we have an equation without fractions. We now solve this equation and then check the possible solutions. To solve, let's first clear the parentheses, and because of the subtraction, we can think of distributing negative 18. This gives us x, and then negative 18 times x is negative 18x, giving us minus 18x. And then negative 18 times negative 3 is equal to positive 54, giving us plus 54 equals 3. Combining like terms, x minus 18, or 1x minus 18, is equal to negative 17x, giving us negative 17x plus 54 equals 3. And now we isolate the variable term by subtracting 54 on both sides. Simplifying, we have negative 17x, 54 minus 54 is 0, giving us negative 17x equals 3 minus 54, which is equal to negative 51. The last step is to divide both sides by negative 17. Negative 17 divided by itself simplifies to 1. 1 times x is x. We have x equals negative 51 divided by negative 17, which is positive 3. But we're not done yet. When solving a rational equation, we need to verify that the possible solutions actually work. And in this case, notice how if we go back up to the original equation and substitute 3 for x, we would have 3 divided by 3 times 3 minus 9, which gives us 9 minus 9, which is 0. Notice here we have division by 0, which is undefined, and therefore x equals 3 cannot be a solution, which tells us in this case the equation has no solution. This is the reason why, when solving a rational equation, we always need to verify our solutions actually work. If we continued performing substitution, notice how we would have minus 6 equals 1 over, again, 3 minus 3 is 0, we would have division by 0 again. So again, because division by 0 is undefined, x equals 3 is not a solution, and the equation has no solution. x equals 3 is what's called an extraneous solution, which is a value that appears to be a solution, but really isn't. I hope you found this helpful.